Praise the Lord. Good morning. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good and he is greatly to be praised. Amen. Wow. How's everybody doing this morning? Praise God. Good morning, my sister. Good morning, my brother and my sister. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Praise God. Well, you know, I hope everybody had a wonderful, praise the Lord. Amen. I hope everybody had a wonderful um, Resurrection Day weekend and Holy Week. Praise God. It's, um, it's just a, a wonderful time. Wonderful time. Amen. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, um, I mean, it was cold. Oh, my goodness. I tell you what, here in North Carolina, it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. So I thank God for um, just, you know, just having that. See, I need to come visit. <laughs> um, yes, but we had a wonderful time. I have something special for you guys today. First of all, I want to thank everyone um, that's watching in the replay. God bless you also. Amen. Thank God for you. And then for those of you who joined us on the fast, amen, whether you fasted 40 days, 15 days, or, you know, or five days, praise God for you. I pray that God bring the trans. Um, the transformation in your life. Praise God that you've been seeking God for. Amen. As we began the fast, the whole fast was really about asking God for something personal. Say, God, change me. God, feel me. God, heal me. God, you know, make me make me more aware of you. It's um, you know, we could have chosen something and say, here, pursue this. But if that if that this wasn't your this, then so you know, the the prayer was that God would give you what you have need of for you. Amen. He would give me what I have need of for me. Um, thank y'all for who went the, the full 40 days troopers, you know, who went the full, you know, 15 days troopers. And if you went five days trooper, one day, bless you. <laughs> Amen. Trooper. Praise God. Thank God for you. You know, I just appreciate you all. And I know that God is doing this for you. This is for you. Amen. I fast every year. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I fast every year. So, you know, I know that this is for those of you that this is new during the Lent season. Um, it's a time of sacrifice. Praise God. And watch God do new things on the other side. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, um, there's a song. I'm, I'll get to it in just a minute. But I did have a, a very good holy day. Um, ho holiday, holy day. Um, it was a blessing. Praise God, just to be with others that worship and honor God. Amen. It was just a good day. Just a good day all around. Amen. Well, the Lord has made us some promises. You know, we're gonna we're gonna stick to the promises every day. So that's gonna be a part of our, our signature until the Lord changes it. How's that? Okay. Um, so one of the promises that God has given us is in Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. And it says this, it says, and you shall remember. The Lord your God, for he gives you power to get well, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto his father, unto your fathers, as it is this day. Amen. So God, thank you for giving us the power to get well. Amen. Praise God. Welcome, my sister. Miss you. Amen. So we thank God today for the giving us the power to get well. Now, God, show us how to harness that power. Thank you. Amen. 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 You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. And you got it. See? Praise God. Amen. Now we just ask God to show us how to how to harness that power. How to how to grab hold to it and and put it in motion or or receive, you know, or get it on path with it. Because indeed God gives us a lot of things. Amen. But we still have to amen. We have to know how to take hold of the promises until we see them come to pass. Amen. Say, say, God, you gave me the power to get well. Now, Lord, show me how to harness that power. Show me how to put it into action. Amen. Praise God, everybody. Praise God. Say, I receive the power to get well. Praise God. And it says, what is it for, though? What is it for? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That he may establish his covenant which he swore unto our fathers um, as it is this day. Amen. So that he may establish his covenant. Everything that God blesses us with is for the glory of the kingdom. 
and then when people see us when people see you blessed and and you know doing progressive things driving nice transportation living in a nice house dressed nicely when they hear you um not argumentative and combative but you know um really you know really um agreeable in your conversation amen or even when you have to make a decision a harsh a decision that's not necessarily with the status quo but they see how classy you are and how you respond amen how sophisticated you are all of that's a part of your wealth amen all of that is something that god gives you praise god that's unique to to that should be unique anyway to the christian body so we thank God for that, and we just pray that you and I and each one of us will walk in the fullness of that glory to which he gives us. Amen? Amen. Well, today's today's program, um, we're getting ready to start a study on the Holy Spirit. What? Yes. Amen. You know, one of the most powerful things about being a New Testament Christian, being a Christian in this day, is that Jesus, amen, gave upon his resurrection, he gave us the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And this is the power, amen, to walk forth in the glory of God, to do the things that he has called us to do. Praise God. And we'll talk about it a little bit more in detail. But before we do that, there's a, there's a song that um, I don't know how many of you. I grew up listening to um, Christian radio on an AM station. Amen. Because it was better than the one on the FM station. On an AM station that had all these old songs on it, right? And just when I was getting ready to start today's program, this song came to mind. So I do hope that you guys can hear it. If you can't hear it, just say something to me. It said, you must have the fire and Holy Ghost. The burning thing that keeps the prayer wheel turning. The kind of religion you can't conceal. It makes you move, makes you shout, makes you cry when it's real. Amen. Praise God. It said, keep your hand in the winding chain. Until your soul is anchored in Jesus' name. I'm filled within. I'm free from sin. You know that I've been born again, right? Y'all, if I could sing, I would sing that song all day, way back, right? <laughs> Hey, Amen. This the you know, this is a group called the Harmonettes. Praise God. And um it's just that's a song the series, right? It says you must have the fire and the Holy Ghost that burns within and keep, you know. I was, I said that's a good that's a something to listen to. You know, hey, amen. It says ultimately in the end you must be born again. Hey, amen. So, I listen to it and as I we hear it and as I hear more songs that are are like that, you know, there's a lot of Christian songs out there now. There really are. But that song teaches us something. It says it teaches us something. It teaches us that we we need to have the Holy Spirit. And here's why. <laughs> Amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. I thank God for it. I the Lord just brought it back to me today. So I was like, God, I'm gonna share this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, You must have the fire and Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> it's it's a blessing. All right, so let's get in the word today. Remember, Jesus told his disciples, and ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come up on you. Amen. That's Acts 1 and 8. It says, It says, You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in the uttermost parts of the world. So Amen. So remember, Jesus told them even back in, in the Gospels, he says, the Holy, he says, I'm sending you the comforter and he is going to one first thing I love that he's going to bring all things in my remembrance. <laughs> Amen. He's, he's going to he's going to bring he's going to decipher between that which is sin and that which is holiness. Amen. Which means he's going to bring conviction. Praise God. And then we're going to see him. 
Amen. We see him again. And, and, and Jesus told them to do what? He said, breathe in and receive the Holy Spirit. So who is the Holy Spirit? Amen. You know, on here it says it makes you, you know, it makes you dance, makes you shout, makes you cry when it's real. Amen. What's that crying? That crying is reflection of conviction, I'm sure. Praise God. Amen. But let's hear what the Word of God says about who who um, Holy Spirit is. Amen. So that we can really get to know Him, the person of the Holy Spirit. We can get to understand Him. Amen. Build that build that relationship with Him, so that when He comes and He says, "Now speak, and I'll do." Now speak and I'll do. Because that's what we have to expect from God. Sometimes God just wants, he just wants us to say, Lord, what you want me to do? I just want you to say, speak and I'll do. Because it's the spirit of God, the power of God that heals. It's the power of God that brings deliverance. It's the power of God that brings change, right? Amen. So what, what is our job to do? Our job is to believe what he said and say it. And once we believe it and say it, we'll see it. Praise God. Let's learn about the person of the Holy Spirit today. You know, one of the most, I'll say, serious errors that we make in um, our mind about the Holy Spirit is that he's an it and not a him. <laughs> Amen. But he is, the, he is the third person in the Godhead. Amen. He is, um, he is the one that is the, is the consciousness, I would say, or that of God. That when he talks to us, praise God, we feel the unction. I mean, we feel the feeling of the Holy Spirit. You know, when Holy Spirit speaks, when the Father speaks, it's a very clear, very clear, like, oh, the word stands on that. The end. Praise the Lord and welcome, man of God. Amen. So when we hear the Father speak, it's very clear and decisive. You know, when we hear, um, amen, and when we hear Holy Spirit leading us, the Spirit leads us gently. He guides us. You know, it's kind of like, here, let me, let me help you along the way. <laughs> amen. The Father's just get there. The son is, she's coming, you know, hey, let's have some grace. Praise God. Let's, let's show grace here. Amen. Let's show some grace and mercy. Let's give her some time. Praise the Lord and welcome today. Um, Caitlin, bless the Lord today. Amen. So, you know, so when, when the, when the son steps in the middle and he's like, she's coming so that there's no, she's coming. Amen. Grace is here. Praise the Lord. Favor is here. All right. Holy Spirit now. And the Holy Spirit now says here this way. So when we experience the God, the Father gives that ultimate word. The Son gives us the grace and the favor to accomplish it. And then the Holy Spirit guides us in the direction that God wants to go. So he is the third, amen, being, amen, person in the Godhead. Now, the personality of the Holy Spirit speaks to the mind. Um, you know, speak, the Bible really speaks of the mind of the Holy Spirit. Look at with me Romans um, chapter 8. And oh, good, we're right on time. Good. We're going to close. Okay. Romans um, chapter 8 and 27, verse 27. And it says this. Oh, let's go to 26. This tells us we're talking about, you know, the Bible talks about the mind of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then we'll take a look at the will of the Holy Spirit next. It says, and likewise, the Spirit also helps us our infirmities. But we know not to pray as for we ought. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be understood. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So when we know the mind or speak of the mind of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's mind is, is that of God. When, you know, there's no separation between God. There's no division between um, God himself, God the Father, amen, the Son, and the Spirit. They are indeed one. So when we see the oneness of the Lord, Amen. Excuse me. When we see the oneness of the Lord, we see now the Holy Spirit is speaking to us according to what he hears in the throne. And the, the words that he's speaking to us are words directly from where? From the heart of God. 
to each and every one of us. It says it makes he makes intercession for us because we don't know necessarily to pray everything that we ought to pray. It says, but he searches the heart. He that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to what? He's not just making an intercession because every little flimsy, flimsy thing we pray, but according to whom? According to the will of God. Holy Spirit's truest desire is to usher us into the presence of God for an eternity. When Jesus said that he would be our comforter, he said that he would be our guide. He would be our keeper during this time. He would be the one that would direct us. He says he will bring, lead us into what? All truth. Praise God. So Holy Spirit also wants us. Amen. He speaks of the will of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12 and 11. And this is what we see here in um, 1 Corinthians 12, just so that we're clear. What we see in 1 Corinthians 12 is a rehearsal of the gifts of the Spirit. And, and he talks about, he says, to um, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of the knowledge of, the, um, the, of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by the same spirit to another and then it goes on and on and says but all these worketh that one and the self by one and the self same spirit dividing unto every man severally as he wills so the holy spirit one He's guiding us into the presence of God at all times. He prays for us. He intercedes for us. Amen. His heart is to bring us to the Father, remember? Praise God. It's, it's to bring us to the Father. That's his love and passion. So in, in having that love and passion to bring us to the Father, now it says that he gives us gifts. Look at Holy Spirit. Gives us gifts. Amen. Severally, not just one gift, but severally, you know, as he wills i'll say even as the as the, the father wills because everything that he does just like everything that jesus said everything i say is is because of what my father says amen and then holy spirit gives us gifts amen J and after what the heart of the father he ushers us into the gifts and into the presence amen of god the father these gifts are for the working of the ministry for the edifying of the saints for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Praise God. So we see what some of these gifts are. And all of these gifts come from God. Amen. But, and and we, we're made eligible to receive these gifts through Jesus. And they are brought to us by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So are these three? No, these three are one. One voice, one heart, one mind one agenda, one goal, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Amen. All one. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. He is often described, Holy Spirit is often described as speaking to rec directly to men um, in the book of Acts. During Paul's second missionary journey, the apostle um, was forbidden by the Spirit to speak to certain on the mission field. Um, that's Acts 16 and 6. So he was forbidden. It's like, nope, this isn't your direction. Praise God. If we look at Acts 16 and 6, um, I'll just cover it. It says, now when he had gone um, throughout, oh, wow, Phrygia, amen, and the region of Galatia, and they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word of God in Asia. Okay. Um, after they were come to Mycenae, um, they essayed to go into, it's, I want to say Bithynia. It says, but the Spirit suffered them not. It says, and they were passing through Messiah, um, Messiah, 
Um, and then come down to Troas, and a vision appeared unto Paul in, in the night. And there stood a man in Macedonia and prayed, saying, Come over unto Macedonia and help us. Now, this is something powerful, saints. You know, I know that a lot of times we just want to go out and preach the word and do and do and do. And that's just because we love God, right? But you notice this. Paul listened to what the Holy Spirit was telling him. He listened to where he was guiding him, right? The Lord would not, the Father, amen, it was not his will for them to go into Asia. He said, no, don't go into Asia, go this way. And then when they went to go into Bithynia, it says, um, Bithynia, it says that um, the Spirit suffered them not. He would not allow them to go, amen. But then he showed them, look at how the Spirit is guiding them. One in Asia, we don't know what he would have encountered during that time. It was just not the time for the word of God to enter Asia, right? Amen. And so we, we knew that it was not the time for the teachings of Christ to enter Asia. Amen. And so next, when they went to go into um, Bithynia, he says, no, it's not time to go there yet either. See, everything is according to God's timing. And if we trust Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is going to keep us on God's timing. He is now the Holy Spirit shows him in a dream, man praying in Macedonia. Amen. And then he says, come and help us. And the Holy Spirit then what? Let them go to Macedonia. Why? Because faith was already established there. The word had come there. And what? We don't know the full why. All we know is this, is that Holy Spirit guides us into the path where God wants us to go the most. Praise God. If you need something from God, be like that man in Macedonia. Start praying. God will send you the answer. Amen. Be like the man in Macedonia. Start praying and watch God send you the answer. Amen. He'll send you someone. Praise God. Whether he sends you someone, he sends you a message in an email. Amen. He sends you, you pass by a billboard. There's a notice on one of those little church placards. Somebody has gotten a great word or revelation there to share. Amen. Then it will still go. It will still be there. Praise God. So there's the message will get to you. And that's the responsibility of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To make sure that we get them to guide us in that path, to bring all things to our remembrance, to um, to to keep us you know, out of hurt, harm and danger. Praise God. And that's what he was doing. We don't I mean, at the time, Asia not good ground, not for Paul, because Paul was called to a specific people. And I mean, he may ultimately have gone there, but right now the spirit of the Holy Spirit leads you where God wants you to go. If you're wondering, God, what do I do next? Praise the Lord. Begin to sit down and study the Holy Spirit and to pray and ask him to guide you. Amen. And to pray and ask him to open your eyes, to show you how he's guiding you. He showed, he guided Paul Amen. Through a dream of a man praying in Macedonia. Paul went, there he was, and the ministry continued on. Praise God. How many of you have ever had an experience like that? Well, God, amen, he guides you through visions. Praise the Lord. But we have to remember it's the Holy Spirit. So, you know, that and, and that and that we should continue even in getting the vision. Even in receiving the vision, we should continue in continued communication with Holy Spirit to say, all right, Holy Spirit, I see that you're bringing me here. I see that there's a there's someone there that I should meet. Amen. And when I get there, you're going to tell me what to say, right? Or you're going to tell me in advance. Which one? <laughs> Praise God. But the point is that we're following the Holy Spirit because he's leading us according to the will of God. Amen. Praise God. You know, I love how um, he is instructed, praise God, on what to say, even if we look down to verse 10. It says, and after he had seen the vision, immediately he endeavored to go into Macedonia. Assuredly, let me get this. This is verse 10. Assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Paul was preaching the gospel. So he's like, okay, the Lord wants me in Macedonia. What am I here to do? To preach the gospel. Amen. Wherever God is leading you, it's always to show forth his glory, to lead people to Christ. Praise God to pray for the sick. Amen. To bring someone to, um, to pray with that person, to encourage their faith, to read them scripture. 
they were led by the Spirit of God. And then I recently sat and listened to a story about, amen, ministers, um, some of the patriarchs, amen, in the Pentecostal faith. And one of the things it talked about was how, amen, the people that got saved, they did not wait for, you know, I guess for angels to come down and sing and, you know, say, this is your orders, thus saith the Lord. I mean, they felt an unction. They felt compelled of the Holy Spirit. And so they would go and pray for people so that they could tell them about Christ. Amen. And some of them would say, well, who called you to preach or who called you to do that? And they said, I just felt that Holy Spirit wanted me to talk to them. So I did. I, the Holy Spirit told the lady to go sit and read the Bible to a man who had been said that he had pancreatic cancer and was going to die. So she went over and started reading him the Bible. After her third visit of reading him the Bible, amen, then the Lord told her now, ask him, does he do, does he want to be saved? And so she asked him, she, she said, um, do you want to be saved? And he said, what's saved? And he says, I want to be baptized. And she says, well, if you believe in Jesus Christ and ask him into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, you can you should be baptized. He said, well, yeah, I'll do that. He did that, got baptized, and got up with no pancreatic cancer, according to the story. <laughs> now, that's according to the history. He got up and went, it says he got up and went to work the next day. That's the testimony. What was she called to do? The Holy Spirit told her to go read him the Bible. And she did on three different occasions. Amen. And when we follow the unction, amen, when we follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit, then we see the blessings of God manifest. Praise God. Amen. It's God. It is God's spirit who speaks directly to Christian leaders at Antioch, commanding them to send Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey. And that's in first Corinthians um, chapter 13 and verse two. I'm sorry, Acts chapter 13 and verse two. So we see one, the Holy Spirit leading Paul directly. And then next we see the Holy Spirit speaking to leadership. Amen. To now guide Paul on his journey. So we know that the Holy Spirit, one, he is in the, he's the third man in the Godhead. Two, he was sent to us by Jesus Christ. Praise God to, to usher us into the presence of God. Amen. Into onto our path to be that light, that, that light, that's a beacon out in front of us. That is direction and guidance. Amen. We know that he is, he is there to speak to us, to keep us from hurt, harm, and danger by guiding us in the pathway of safety, the pathway that God has prepared for us and for our ministries. Amen. Praise God. And then he's got, Holy Spirit's going to tell us what to say when we get there. Remember the scripture tells us, don't fret what you're going to talk about. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and then when you get there, Holy Spirit will guide you. Praise God. He will give you what to say. Amen. So don't worry about it. When you get there, the Spirit of God will give you what to say. If he tells them, tell you to share your testimony, or if he tells you like he told this, this lady, um, on and I saw her on television, so I saw the story, the testimony on television. Um, so if he or if he tells you like he told her, go sit and read the Bible to him. Go and sit and read the Bible to him. He didn't tell her go pray for him for healing anything. He said go sit and read the Bible with him for him, and she did that, and he was healed. Praise God. Now, you know, not only will God speak to you, but he will also speak to leaders, amen, in the ministry, in the church to give, to help guide you and also bring you that acceptance in broader ministry. So Paul went from that one-on-one, -on -one, me and God, we got this, amen, to now, amen, he is now a part of an organization, the organ of what was becoming the organized church, right? And he is now on a broader path and that path will lead him to more people amen and lead him to um let's let's just take a look at it it says this and i'm looking at first um acts chapter 13 verses 1 and 2 and it says now um there were in the church they were in the church at that was at antioch certain prophets and teachers as barnabas and simon simeon um came and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of, of Cyrene, and Manon, um, which, be, which would be brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And it says, and as they ministered the word and fasted, 
ministered and fasted, praise God, the Holy Spirit said, separate Barnabas and Saul for work whereunto I have called them. Amen. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them on their way. Praise God. So they were being sent out by the Holy Spirit to do a work for the church, for the body at large. Amen. So he went from praying for one person at a time. Now he's going to groups of people. Amen. Do you feel called to ministry? Do you feel the hand of God on your life? Do you feel the leading of the spirit? Amen. It always starts with preaching one to one. Minister to your friends, to your neighbors, to that one person you met in Walmart. Praise God. And then, amen, or that one person you met in Saks Fifth Avenue, wherever you shop. <laughs> amen. Amen. Or the one person, like my husband, he met one of his good friends. Amen. In, in Outback Restaurant. You know, we're standing there waiting on food and he and the guy kick up a conversation. And the next thing I know, they're exchanging numbers and saying, man, let's get together. We, I do the run thing you can run to. And, you know, now God is doing what a God is doing. Amen. God uses our every experience. If you're open, amen, to minister one to one. And then after you move from ministering one to one, praise God, then God will elevate you. And that elevation means that he can trust you in, in the words that he tells you that you speak them. Praise God. In the acts that he tells you to do, you do them. Praise the Lord. So when, you know, as he's perfecting his work in you, then Paul, he's now sent out to a group. And he ministers to that group. Amen. And we know that the group ultimately became the church. And, and now he's speaking to the church of Ephesus, like the whole city. <laughs> you know, this is my letter to the Galatians. Not this person in Galatia, but all the Galatians. <laughs> Praise God that are in the church and believers there. And ultimately his word came to us. Why? Because he listened to the Holy Spirit. He listened to the Holy Spirit. He did what he told him to do. Amen. He followed in the pathway and then he left a legacy as to what God had called them to do. That's you guys. That's me. That's all of us. Follow the voice of Holy Spirit. Amen. He will lead you into all righteousness. That's what the word of God says he's here to do, right? Amen. Well, we'll continue our conversation um, regarding Holy Spirit. Amen. On tomorrow. Bless you. Thank you so much. I'd like for you to go ahead and like follow and share this message. I do hope that it blessed you and it will bless others. Praise God. Amen. Like, follow, and share. That's how we make an impact in the lives of those that we touch. Amen. In addition to that, we also have a donate button on the Facebook page and a donate page on our website. So if you feel compelled to give to this ministry, we encourage you to either donate on Facebook or go to biblicaletv.com. Amen. And then just It'll come around or, 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 or wipe over. Amen. Just keep going, you know, swipe to the swipe, swipe, swipe. It'll come up and you'll see give to this ministry online giving. And you can go ahead and make a donation to the ministry. All dollars that come in are for the glory of God. Amen. And for your blessing. They're for your blessing. So um, obey the voice of God, however the Spirit of God leads you. Amen. And we thank you so much. So glad those of you joined us today. We'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. God bless. <clears throat>